You're listening to PDR Tool Talk, all about PDR stories, tools, and techniques. For the thousands in attendance, ladies and gentlemen, uh, let's get ready to rumble! Hey, what's up, everybody? My name is Mike Toledo, along with John Hiley. Vince D'Alessandro and Daniel Grom. Welcome everybody. How you guys been? Awesome. Good. Very man. well. Real yeah. good. Come on, man. Let's hear some enthusiasm, man. <laughs> yeah, man. I've been in the suck this week, man. And I, 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 my office manager's gone, so I'm like, oh, you have to work, every, huh? Oh gosh. I'm doing everything. I'm answering the phones. I'm doing the estimates. I'm doing the dance, and so I call that being in the suck. In the suck. <laughs> yeah. I'm getting ready to head out to Costa Rica on Saturday. So I'm busting my butt trying to make as much money as possible the next, this complete week to make up for it. Oh, yeah. That's right. You're going to Costa Rica. This Costa oh, they're going to kidnap you and hold you for ransom out there. If, if the gorillas. You don't like to go anywhere, man. What are you talking about? Like, I can't believe you're going to Costa Rica, let alone you get out of Long mm-hmm. Beach, dude. Oh, hey yeah. man, I hear they they like skinny white boys down there, Vince. So you're in good yes. shape, boy. I hear the monkeys come out and like try and steal your stuff. You know, like constantly, you're at the beach and they they they, they grab your bags and your cell phones and stuff. They're sitting there drinking your beers. <laughs> <laughs> hey. I've seen them on YouTube drinking your drinks and falling down. Right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, cool. yeah. You know, it's so funny because I actually ran into a guy one time, repaired his vehicle, and he was from somewhere in South America, like Brazil or something like that. And literally, I was like, man, I always wanted to go to Brazil. He looked at me and says, oh, ho, ho, ho. he's like, you know, he goes, what they do to white people down there? And I'm like, what? He goes, the women attack you. Right. I was like, really? And he's like, oh, yeah. He's like, take me back. He's like, you're like an exotic something or another when you're down there. And I'm like, oh, man, I might yeah, just have to. Yeah, but you're not really white. You look like Taliban. <laughs> yeah, that's true. So, yeah. I think I might have been I, a little yeah, yeah, bit whiter back there. I didn't have a beard either, so I might have been able to. <laughs> Actually, John, you don't want to go there. <laughs> yeah. I, this, is, this is a true story. My um, my cousin was actually, uh, he. Don't bum internet, us out, Daniel. He, yeah, I'm going to bum you out. <laughs> he, he did some internet dating. Oh, boy. Met a woman down there. Went down to visit her. The second time he went down to visit her, she kidnapped him and murdered him and took all of his assets. Ugh. Yeah, oh, he bumped us out. That yeah. does. He, he, was, she, he was just he was just on a TV show uh, like a couple weeks ago, um, like Dateline or something. Oh, that sucks. Yeah, it's one of these shows, you know, that highlight all that stuff. I and thought the you're freaking person. That lady that she got five years. And she's mm-hmm. out on bail. Oh, there. God. Yeah. Yeah. So she's running free. I thought you were going to yeah. say he went down there and find out that she was like a 400-pound dude or something. Yeah. <laughs> no, they scammed him. And they he had they cleaned out his bank account and everything, and then they murdered him and buried him. Have you guys? But you know what? For five years, they probably think it's worth it. You have, know? Have you guys heard of that? Sure. Dr- have you guys heard of that drug that they have down there? It's called like Devil's Horn. No. Yeah, it's there. If you guys ever get a chance, go onto YouTube and watch a Vice episode about this devil's horn drug. This thing, it looks like a little horn and it grows off of a tree just randomly in South America. But you can mm. literally blow some of this stuff in somebody's face, and if it gets in their system, they just become a zombie that o- they obey everything you say. Like you can oh, that's just. That's in Haiti. No, right? it's in South America as well, Vince. Uh, uh, wh- wh- check out the episode of Vice. They literally took this guy and had him driving him to the ATM machine, taking money out. Like ha- he was helping unload and move things out of his own apartment to put it in their van so they could steal it. Wow. What? <laughs> really? Yeah, it's You're a drug. Lying. No, 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 no. Look it up. It is a drug. That when, when they give it to you, they just do everything you can say. No you know? way. I was almost well, thinking about getting some of that and giving it to my wifey, you know? There you go. Well, there was a movie that, that hey, it, it lasts like 24 hours, man. You know, it's not going to be a big deal. You know, she'll never remember. <laughs> exactly. In, in the 80s, there was that movie, The Serpent in the Rainbow, with Bill Pullman. And that was kind of, that was in, in Haiti. If you guys remember that, remember they had like the blowfish yeah. that 
They no, took the Vin, drug from the blowfish and this. crushed it up and blew it in no, his face. And no, Vin. oh, it was a great movie. <laughs> and he was a zombie. And they like buried him, and then he woke up like two days later in a grave. And they had to, you know, he had to pull himself out. And it was <laughs> awesome. <laughs> all right, good movie. All right. That's let's only happened to me on. once. So let's, let's yeah, move right, on. Let's hey. so, okay, on so to, the point is, watch my ass, guys. <laughs> yeah. Oh, oh. Don't all go right, to South America. I was guiding you wrong, taking you down the wrong path. I'll be in Central, Central America. Yeah. At least have a hard time when you guys are on a subject i have a hard time moving you on to the next one so, yeah, yeah he, he's comedy. giving us the eyes too <laughs> all right so old, old news yeah old news so let's crack a lack in news. news yes mike you missed the last episode which was episode 77 which we covered bumper repair and a, uh, advanced ground or i'm sorry advanced crown flow techniques for plastic bumper repair uh it was really good educational episode all three of us shared our opinions and and how we tackled big dents on corners of bumpers and stuff like that down some knowledge bombs interesting i i i was listening to it and uh i wanted to say what you'd use this tool i would use this one you know i wanted to chime in but uh yeah yeah, you guys guys did really really well on that podcast well that's one of the benefits of actually being here for the podcast, Mr. Mike Toledo. <laughs> I don't know if you guys noticed, but I'm pretty popular around here, so I got a lot of stuff to do. Okay. Yeah, you're yeah. pretty famous in San Diego. <laughs> in my own family, okay. Yeah. So that's right. <laughs> I'm known in Escondido. Yeah, yeah, I'm known in Escondido, man. All right. That's right. Uh, so yeah, so cool. we, we covered that. Do you guys have anything to add to that we might have missed what's, out on? Well, well no, we, wait, 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 the, wait, 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 wait. We did cover the Mega Media event. And uh, oh, yes. yeah. quickly, to be honest with you guys, I don't even know if there's going to be any availability um, when this show releases. So we recorded a week early. And we've. Didn't you say you only got seven spots left? Uh, yes. There's Six? basically seven spots left. And uh, they, yeah, they let me will. Check that email just to make sure. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. And uh, so, I mean, it's just going crazy. I mean, people had a lot of questions. We finally got our message out to where it was clear. People understood everything they was getting, and then they understood the price. And as soon as all that stuff came together, it's just like everybody started buying it up. So, um, you know, it's going to be a sold-out event three months ahead of time. And uh, we're already planning the next one, which is going to be interesting as well. But, uh, man, I'm, I'm looking if if – the link is available. You guys can go check it out. I don't know if we, if somebody cancels or something like that, we're going to open it back up. So you can always check uh, Dent Trainer or our Dent. What is that? What is it, Mike? Are you going to have like a? You yeah, Dent, have like a waiting list or something like that. Yeah, if, yeah, if that's what can't get in. That's what we're going to do. Yeah, we're going to put a waiting list up there. Uh, so if there is a spot available, you guys can go to denttrainermedia.com and sign up. Um, if there's not a spot available, we're going to have a waiting list that you can get on, um, just in case somebody Perfect. you know something happens, we can get you out there. Good deal. What were you right. going to say, Mike? No, I, I, John was just asking me what what uh, website it was, and I was just okay. Filling in. So okay. let's the talk about our subject. Hold on, hold okay. on, hold on. Right. Hold on. Okay. okay, I want you to keep the, for you East Coasters and Midwesterners and Southerners. Keep in mind, October in Southern California, we are still at the beaches. It is still in the seventies and eighties. So bring your bikinis and your g strings <laughs> and bikinis. <laughs> your mankinis, right? The mankinis. <laughs> Make sure you banana hammock. Yeah, banana hammock that junk over there. Uh, yeah. I already said I'm going to the nude beach. Uh, yes, Black's Beach. <laughs> I get right? out there. Mike knows where that is. Black's yeah. Beach. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh yeah. I don't have no tan line. Okay. I, I guess. <laughs> hey, but you know what though? You know what I'm, though? I'm, I'm, no. I'm visioning John in a mankini. At the nude beach. Oh God. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you know what? I should film that in slow motion. Da, 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 da. <laughs> you know what, though? I just, I just don't want everybody to come up to me and ask me if I was the stunt double for that movie. You guys remember that movie Anaconda? Yeah. Yeah, I, I do not want people to confuse me with the stunt double of that. So, you know, I'll, I'll keep off that beach. You know, last week, Mike, I don't know if you heard this, but I told him, I said, because I look like a Taliban, I did not want the helicopters to hit over the top and like FBI come raid me, you know, thinking I have a Scud missile out there on that beach. <laughs> yeah, you, you're all right, man. I, you're all right, man. You'll be all right. All right. <laughs> so so what, are we, what are we doing now? What's our subject? All right. Tonight? So Go our Daniel. subject is blending hammers and vince brought up the subject somebody posted 
how many blending hammers do we need? So this guy was out there complaining that we have too many blending hammers. Or not a, too many, enough. too many hammers in general. Right. Mm. And so I'm like, this is a great subject to tackle. Let's talk about this because honestly, we're fortunate. We get a lot of tools sent to us for, for review, you know, previews and, and right. just to check out and stuff. And so we're inundated. And what I find myself now is I have my cart organized and I, and I buy, this is a little advanced tech tip. I buy PVC pipe and I, that's what I slide my hammers in and I have a bunch of them mounted to the side of my uh, cart and, and I have all my blending hammers and I'm finding myself grabbing blending hammers for very specific skills. And I like it. I personally like having the, the exact hammer, you know, John, you know, when I'm doing a rail, I grab your hammer, you know, what, you, what hammer is that? Uh, John, what hammer is that? <laughs> <laughs> that is, of course, the tactical hammer. The tactical <laughs> hammer. But the I got to tell you that mine is more than just a hammer. It does a lot of different things. So many of you guys might know that. It does. But the, the one thing it does better than any other hammer is blending rails. You put that blending ball on there. You're not throwing your elbow way up in the air. You're not throwing your shoulder way up in the air. You're just letting it drop. And you can blend a rail better than any other hammer. Hands down, the best hammer out there for rails. Well, until the new one comes out, wait till you get that. It's gonna be, it's gonna be in the mail. Oh, to you. <laughs> dude, it's, and you know what? I I gotta tell you, that thing looks sexy. Yeah, it dude. Just, and you're calling it the Punisher. I'm calling it the Punisher, and uh, it still has the you know the head that pivots, so you can still tilt it down towards the rail. And all of them things, but it's it's much lighter and it's just it's a smaller, more compact unit. So I'm having a, a really good time using it. I mean, I've just but it but it it's it's got the cool factor because it looks like a skull, right? You know, and that was not planned. So I know uh, it but that's, was it, like it, it just, just badass. It, I think you were the first one yeah. that caught that, oh. Daniel. You yeah. know, when you seen it upside down, but. Uh, yeah, that's uh, that was actually not planned, and I talked to the manufacturer about it today, and he was like, "Oh, <laughs> <You know? laughs> and, uh, so I don't know." And I convinced John to make some custom T-shirts for all you fans out there, so we're gonna have Punisher Tactical Hammers T-shirts. That's right. Well, what I've right, done. John. That's right? right. Yeah, it fits okay. the brand. It fits the brand. So, I would go ahead, Mike. No, go ahead, Vince. I'm going. You're first. I'm going to play devil's advocate because Daniel oh, likes me go. to do that. Yeah. I, uh, Are you going to go to the damn craftsman hammer? Are you, are you going to no. go straight there? Okay. Don't even say I'm that that's the best for rails, the craftsman. I'm just going to go and say that I've rented a U-Haul trailer to hold all the hammers that I got. <laughs> <laughs> In fact, uh, you know, they have those boxes that you buy now that uh, transport the transport what what are those things that I, shipping container i bought a shipping container just to hold all the hammers that i got no i'm, I'm joking gonna, i'm gonna i'm gonna agree with you though daniel on the serious note here is uh unless you've tried all the blending type of hammers you don't know what really the the potential and what each one of them do or specialize in. you know there's there's one uh that the hammer i just reviewed not too long ago but that that one kind of rocks if you hold it in the middle and you have a ball on the end of it you can rock it back and forth like from the middle and it kind of just bounces you know in a way it does and then if you have jeremy langton's the new thin like the what, what kind of tip is that on there that you sent me titanium it's yeah it's got a titanium very accurate not too heavy you know it's very just just does what it's supposed to do and it's very precise and titanium the the thing that i've noticed with titanium it has a dead blow effect on metal yeah. so if you guys haven't tried uh titanium yet what you'll notice is it, it does have a dead blow kind of effect kind of like a dead blow hammer mm -hmm. and it's very unique it has a unique feel and it, it does react to the metal differently than other hammers and I, 
strongly encourage you guys to try that out. Yeah, that and Daniel, you're you're absolutely right because you sent us out the Dent Technologies hand, hammers last week, and I used it today. I've been using it for the last week, and and today I had a, a rocker panel, which is a lot like a rail of a car. Right. And, you know, it's thicker metal and it's a radius, so it, it, it doesn't give as much. And you have to hit it harder. Generally, you have to hit it harder with a, a normal knockdown or, or blending tip. But I used that titanium today on it. And I'm like, oh, crap, I'm actually denting it. You know, I, I thought I was, I was trying to knock down the crowns on it. And I'm like, wow, I'm really surprised on how light the hammer was and how light the tip was. Yet I'm getting these monstrous, you know, knockdowns, which... You know, with a regular hammer and, and knockdown, I I would have to hit it, you know, respectfully hard. Yeah, and that's a good point because you got to adapt to something that's new, and test it out. Always start off gentle and work your way up. But um, that's like like the VIP knockdown. One of the things I've noticed, hey Daniel, Daniel. is. Before, before yeah. you go anything, you mind if I say something about Jeremy Langton? Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't want to go Please. past that before I mentioned it, but uh, and then we'll go back to the VIP. But uh, I got to say that titanium flatty that he has is awesome. I, of yeah. course, I already hit him up and told him that, and uh, we had a nice little conversation. Um, that guy, he is pumped to manufacture, and he uh, he really wants to work with other tool vendors out there and, and things like that. And uh, his enthusiasm is just radiates from him about you know the passion with the tools. And um, that kind of hit me this time around when I was talking with him, so that was really cool. But that uh, titanium, he says it's a certain grade titanium, and that flatty's just, it's a nice. You know, I really, really like that tip. I'm glad you brought that up because that's something I, I've learned from him and been educated on, that titanium has a grade and that it's not all the same. You know, it, going in, I thought t titanium means titanium, mm -hmm. but there's a certain hardness to titanium and that makes a difference yeah. because I do have some titanium hammers mm -hmm. that are softer. And if you try to use them as a regular hammer, and this is something that happened to me today. So I didn't realize it. I struck, I was trying to straighten a hole and I struck my titanium tip mm -hmm. hammer to a hole to straighten it out. Didn't realize I marked up my titanium hammer face. Yeah. Right? So I get a nice Mercedes Benz, and I'm sitting there ready to blend the, this dent. And I start blending, and all of a sudden I see these marks in the paint. And I'm like, oh. And I stop. And I freaking screwed up the paint. I, I put big old marks in the paint. And then I flipped over the hammer, and I looked at the hammer, and I had these big old scars in the hammer and i'm like oh yeah see bitch. that should never happen with titanium like right the, the titanium knuckles that i have made you like compared to the aluminum they just don't even scratch i don't know if you noticed that yeah. mike i gave you a titanium knuckle because yeah. you were like yeah. in awe you know when you're like Wah! so i gave I you one keep it by itself but dude you <laughs> can throw that in it in your car and hit everything it doesn't scratch like you know other metals it's such a hard alloy it's the hardest. It's like kind of well, like in you a way. think it's hard, but you got you got to know that it's a harder yeah. titanium than others. You know, somebody from Wright Pat Air Force Base. I don't know if you know, we got that Air Force Base Museum up here, but there was a guy talking about that most of the titanium comes from Russia, and America had a hard time getting titanium because they would have to get it through other countries because Russia wouldn't sell it to us directly. But he was saying that America got a giant piece of titanium, found out that it was something they were using on Russian submarines that got reused. And when they came here, they're like, holy shit, how are they doing it? Because you can't weld titanium. Titanium will catch on fire. Well, later on, they said they actually had somebody spy on the Russians. And this was a guy, you know, Air Force guy, said uh, who's a museum tour guy. So they had somebody spying on the Russians, found out they were working in rooms where the oxygen was out of there. So they, like, like, like a light bulb. You know how light bulbs would just burn up if the oxygen wasn't pumped out? They were pumping yeah. all the oxygen out of these rooms so they could weld these giant titanium things on submarines. Wow. You know, because wow. it, wouldn't, it wouldn't actually ignite and catch on fire. They That's had to crazy. wear suits while they were, you know, oxygen suits. 
Well, just think if somebody just opened up the door on accident, you know what I mean? Yeah. Well, hey, (laughs) you know, you know, guys, when they were manufacturing my titanium, (laughs) yeah, when they were manufacturing my titanium, they they took a big old pile of it and he just took a lighter and just lit it right on fire. I mean, the stuff goes up like um, that dry grass that you put in a fire or something like that. I mean, that's how quick it burns up. Yeah. Wow. So amazing. Uh, Yeah, it's interesting to learn about materials that we're using and stuff. Yeah, but Daniel, it might be from aliens. You never know. That's some pretty advanced stuff. That's what I want. I want some alien technology, man. I want some alien metal. I could get my brother-in-law on here. He'd tell you about it. (laughs) Some unobtainium. He's one of them guys. Right? So. good. All right. So now going back to the VIP. So one one of the things that... um, See, I, I lost my train of thought on the VIP now, and you blew it for me. That's God all right. Damn. The VIP. But, you talk about Paul Corden, the VIP. No. <laughs> no, that's uh, Paul. Who, who who does the VIP? Oh, no, I was calling Paul Corden Peter. a very, very important person that we have on our show. Peter. Peter. <laughs> anyway, but one of the unique things that, that Jeremy's doing at Dent Technologies is he's giving you a choice. He it's like you ever been you ever take your kids to build a bear? Hell no. And, or and you build a bear. Girl. Oh right? yeah. American or girl. or yeah, American girl. Well, Jeremy is doing that with blending hammers. So you can literally go to his website and you can build a hammer. You can you can choose the length of the hammer, the ends, the uh both ends, you know, the 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 hand the handle end and the 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 tip end the diameter but he's got hammers he's got i'm going to look at my show notes here he's got one two three four five different hammers that you can choose from so you can build a hammer any way you want with any tip you want so it's endless with tech dent technologies is doing and that's what's great about jeremy and what he's doing is that you can make anything you want. And, you know, if if you live close to Anson, you could also go into Anson and feel, touch, and build your own right there. He's got everything, you know, right. uh, Dent Technologies is in Kansas. If you're, if you're in the Texas area, go over to Anson. He's got every tip and every handle and everything available as well that, and, you know, if you need to touch it ahead of time. And I, it, obviously he'll be at MTE I mean, he's got hammers just just for doing trim. So you hail guys out there that have that plastic trim or that trim that has dents in it. He's got a hammer for that. I, I would like to see a video of how that's done. I mean, I'm. Hey, Mike, um, go over to DentTrainer.com. John Hiley's got one on there. <laughs> You do? <laughs> yeah. I've got God, several. Damn. Yeah. Damn. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'll be a hell dog, man. I got, shoot, I should have known. <laughs> Mike, do you have a subscription to Dent Trainer? Mike, Gosh, I'm going to have to pull you, pour you some of your own Kool-Aid, my friend. Man. Yeah. Hey, hey, Mike, <laughs> I'm going to give you a free my... subscription, okay? We yeah, might geez. let you in there, yeah. What, what section is that in, by the way? <laughs> uh, <laughs> you know, yeah, I think it's in the, quick, quick, in the quick tip section, Mike, and I think there's an advanced section. It's in the infinity section and oh. go all the way down to 4,566. Dude, and you know what? Honestly, that's how big Dent Trainer is. You go on there and you're overwhelmed. There's too many videos there. Well, well you know you what, can, though? You can get lost. You know what, though? Guys need that when they when they come into the industry yeah, or they want to learn great. more. We like to call it an immersion experience. You know Tony Robbins? He always says that people dibble-dabble and stuff. That's the reason why they never get really far into it because they just dabble. They never really, like, immerse themselves in it. Yeah. Well, Dent Trainer, if there was ever an immersion of dent removal education, Absolutely. be ready because you're going under for a while, and when you yeah. come out, you're going to be different, and it's going to be in a better way. Yeah, yeah. I'm drinking the Kool Aid. <laughs> <laughs> All right, sorry about that. We we got a little off track, but uh, so he's got he's got blending tips for for days well, or whatever you want to do. So one of the blending hammers that I got from Jeremy that I'm I'm checking out that's really cool. So it's a blending hammer in it and. It's got a removable tip on one side, but it's got a dedicated striking hammer on that 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 the other side. And 
it's lopsided and it's the perfect extension blending hammer. So you can throw any blending tip you want on there, but you can make it any length you want, but it's the perfect striking blending extension in my opinion. And I love that thing. Mm -hmm. And I want to, it's called the rubber tip blending hammer. It's 150 bucks and you can customize it, make any length you want. 22 inches is, is like the optimum for me, I think. Can I ask you guys a question? 22. Yeah. What, when, when you guys in this day and age, aren't you happy to still be in PDR and be in this day and age where you have options to where some yeah. people might complain, well, there's too many of this and too many of that. Well, I remember there was, wasn't enough of anything. You no. Know, you suck it up. You know, Dude. And th that's what sucks about guys that are complaining about yeah. too many options. Well, Screw them. No, 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 no. Listen to this. No, no, no. I wouldn't say screw them. I mean, that's it, that always comes up. And a guy who I talk to and that I know, Terry Siegel, I remember to this day back before we had the Atlas tabs. Remember when we just had the green tabs and the red tabs? You know, yeah, in, so, the, in the pity tab. Yeah. Back then, I remember Terry saying, there's too many tabs. I don't know why anybody on God's green earth, and I, I don't know if he said it that way, would have come out with another tab, basically. You're, you're paraphrasing, yeah. And he was wrong. And absolutely, because you know what? There is always room for other products as long as people are buying them. You know what? What you know what? you In a market, I'm going to give you guys a little market education here. What happens in a market, whenever there's no room for something, th it disappears because there's nothing to sell. Do you see what I'm saying? So there's no profit for the tool makers, so they stop making them because there's no room. But as long as people are continuously buying and consuming new things, then there is always room. So it's just supply and demand, and that's just the bottom line. And what happens with it's, that? It's more than that. It's innovation, though. Is going yeah, on it's too. An yeah, that's right, because it forces us to come up with better ideas. Like, I yeah. have to come up with a hammer that's versatile because I want to outsell every hammer that's out there. I want mine to be the one in the guy's box that he can use for 10 different things. So I'm targeting that person who wants to get more than just a hammer. You Here's know what, what I mean? Comes down to. Here's what it comes down to. Look, if you... Like, if it wasn't, look, us, we love tools, okay? And honestly, I probably wouldn't be as successful as in many different tools. I can look back on some of my YouTube videos and go, oh my gosh, I would never <laughs> attack a dent the way I just did on video because the tools changed, so my techniques have changed and I've saved more time. Like that Mazda Miata video I did, I spent six, seven hours. I probably could have done it literally in four or five hours now, today. Okay. Yeah. Because of the way I attacked it. I, I would have caused less work for myself with different types of tools. In the, that in the that was legendary, just, by the way, just so you know, that well, was I'm a, just, that I'm was just, a legendary just, dent still yeah. to this day. That's when you can look at and go, Oh God. What, the, the, so, what, uh, I'm getting too ahead. old for that stuff. So <laughs> Mike, that brings up a great point. So check this out. So I had a customer come in and he, and the first thing I asked people is, have you been here before? Yeah, I, I brought my car in here um, a couple of years ago, about three years ago. And um, unfortunately, you said I couldn't do the dent. And I was like, oh, okay. And, but I got a new dent. So I go out there and look at the new dent and I go, yeah, we can help you in here. By the way, let me look at your old dent. And I go over and I look at his old dent and I go, guess what? Things have changed, tools have changed, and I can fix that dent now. I'm right yep. there with you, dude. Yeah. Right. And he was like, really? Oh my gosh. And epiphany went off in my head going, oh my God, that's mm -hmm. how much our industry has changed. Daniel, yeah. if, you, if you get a chance, go over to doording.com, log in and go back to the <laughs> oldest forms. It's of not the, there still, is it? Yeah. <laughs> no, no, no. Doording.com's there. But go, go back to the oldest forums where we were sharing before and after photos. You will lose it, what we were sharing oh, I know. back yeah. then. I'm on there. It, it, we were ooh and on on that. We were ooh and on about chopped up dents that people would be making fun of you about today. And, and that's yeah. because back then, that's what it was. We were like... Soft tips weren't really that like great. Isn't our industry, or, you know, great? I mean, yeah. I, I remember, <laughs> I remember doing dents, do. doing bigger dents, you know, doing soft tip dents. That's what I called them back then. And people were like, D why are you showing that? Why are you not advertising that? Are you? 
I, go, I might have been one of those telling you yeah, that too. Yeah, you might have. <laughs> I go, yeah. Stop Don't do that. Show didn't people they, that. Didn't, didn't they think you can do that? Yeah. Didn't they think we all can do that. I was like, are you guys crazy? I was like, I was like, I was the only one at the time. I thought that. Why, why is that wrong? Why, why don't they want to do stuff like that? You, you, know? Know, you, know what people, you know what people don't get today at this day and age? Every time a new person comes into our industry and becomes good at it, they with this the way Facebook is and stuff like that, next thing you know, three or 400 people they know know that he does it. So now three or 400 more people actually know what paintless dent removal is. They may live on different parts of the world. I mean, it's amazing when an industry grows how it impacts everything. And I'm here to tell you, like back then, and people were worried about having work in the future. And I'm here like I'm worried about getting too much work. I, don't, I feel at this time, at this moment in the industry, for me and for a lot of people I know, it's never been better. Yeah. And, and I, I, yeah. I, I think yeah. See, people subconsciously uh, think that, you know, they look at like subconsciously when someone, you see somebody on Facebook that's doing what they're doing. Okay. And uh, hold on a second. Let me turn on my monitor. I'm turning something. Uh, I think that we're actually setting the bar for each other. Yeah. And and then in the you see it on Facebook. You come across a similar dent, but you saw someone else do it. Maybe a year ago, you came came across the same dent, and you definitely said no. But now you're thinking in your head, well, that guy did it. Now I'm seeing a couple more people do it. Now we're all setting the bar for each other. And I think yeah. that's how it's working right now. That's you know, how that it goes is. back to the guy that, that broke the four minute mile. I was just thinking that Daniel, as you were right? saying that. Yeah. yeah. Before that, everybody said the four minute mile was impossible. Impossible. And as soon as he broke it, four more people did sure. the four minute mile. That month. I think it was yeah. that month they did it. And right, then right. like that year, like 20 people went on to do it. Yeah. Yeah. So do we have to think, uh, we all know Terry Siegel and, you know, we've known him for years and stuff. So, you know, should well, we thank Terry Siegel for being a negative Nancy on the internet all the time or what? But I swear, man, every post on Facebook is, is negative. <laughs> hey, look, Am look. I we can right? give him the negative Nancy award. Sure. Yeah, we could oh, do yeah. that. He's got the Debbie Downer <laughs> negative Nancy award, right? But maybe secretly he's pushing us and pushing innovation yeah. in the PDR industry. You know? Hey, well, no it's doubt. It's okay to be that. I, it's I just okay think he's a that. high, he's a high standard guy, man. That's honestly, right. Yeah. That's know? right. That's right. In That's all no, honesty, in, in all reality, way. look, Terry is like an old school pioneer in this industry. And the dude had tons of knowledge when uh, there was a lot of people that didn't have a lot of knowledge. And uh, we got to give him the mad props and the respect just, you know, for for that alone. Absolutely. But uh, yeah, we'll have to, we'll have to do something to cheer him up, you know? Yeah. So yeah. <laughs> I'm a, Prost- I'll, pro- I'll, I'll, are I'm prostitutes have... and cocaine out of the picture? No, no. I'm going to make him a cherry pie, dude. <laughs> a cherry. A cherry pie. I think we all, yeah. And, you know, we've known Terry and, and he could, he could take the heat from us. You know what? We're going to have to bring him on the show now. I hope he does not if physically explode yes. after hearing this. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't think he listens. Yeah. But you never know. We'll find out if he listens. I'm sure somebody yeah. will tell Terry, him. if you're yeah. listening, let us know that you're listening. We, 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 on the show, Terry. We want to have you on here so you could make fun of us or something. We, we, yeah. we love you, Terry. Yeah. Love you very much. I love you long time. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, so basically what it all comes down to is we all – use many different types of hammers now we're not stuck to i'm just not stuck to the craftsman you know you, you always see myself and paul Corden going back and forth on it paul Corden, for the record owns a craftsman hammer and it's not just on a plaque that we gave him last year yeah. he uses a craftsman yeah. hammer but he also uses many others and uh, i think that's one thing that we all do now is we use many different hammers based on what we're trying to tackle and what we're trying to accomplish Dude, when I was working on a dent today, I had I looked down and I had four different hammers laying on the ground. Yeah. Ready to grab. Mm-hmm. And I'm a sledgehammer guy, so you always gotta have a sledgehammer with you. Absolutely. Sure. Five pounder. Yeah, I have I have five. <laughs> Damn, son, I, I got two. <laughs> so you know are, are we done with hammers? Because there's another subject well, that's been kind of Well, what off. about John's new hammer? Did we well, yeah, we talk, really, we talked, yeah, we talked about, about, we talked about that know, a little but, bit. And you guys know that I'm... We didn't really say 
you know that's another you got new hammer well out. when's it going to be on sale all right well, so we got to get the prototypes it, first it's likely to the test likely going to be next week and these guys machined them so well that i'm going to sell a version i think i'm going to do something different with this i'm going to sell like a basic version that doesn't have the grip it just has the carbon rod and then it has the rubber ball and then the top on it and then people can add from there you know so i want to yeah, sell a, a la carte. yeah i want to sell a really basic version to start out with and then if people want to add stuff to it they can add it and upgrade it but i'm going to try to get the cost down a little bit for the guys out there that might be just when do we starting get ours because we haven't tested it well they i just got them in today as you it guys might be know. junk it might be <laughs> junk guys so I, don't, don't buy it until we we review it oh you guys <laughs> look you guys will have them you guys will have them but yeah they I, you guys know i just got them in today and i only was able to get 100 125 units this time around so i got them putting together another 250 units uh they as we look speak sexy, john they so look really um sexy. I'm, I'm gonna. Daniel, you, you, Daniel, you're gonna get the yellow card for if you interrupt one more time. Okay, <laughs> we're gonna mute you. Yeah. Yellow card. <laughs> I'm gonna. I'm gonna joust you with that pole I was talking about earlier and <laughs> rake your teeth with it. <laughs> A little inside joke, guys. Earlier in the show. <laughs> all right guys so now you guys want to move on a little bit to talk about um i mean you guys want to yep. just touch on a little bit of hail repair we just talked a little bit about molding so now what did you guys i mean i've been doing that for a while obviously i put some videos out there but mike must not be listening to my educational videos you know way over my head but <laughs> <laughs> but what 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 do you guys experience i mean uh, daniel vince have you guys had any experience with working well, on you know what i I didn't even realize that that kind of stuff could be done. Yeah. Except for the internet and seeing other guys doing it. And I'm like, oh, okay. And I got a hail car oh, about four months ago that I did. And it had those black plastic uh, rails that you, you, you can clip out. And they've got like a thin metal membrane, I guess, between the plastic. Are you talking and, the, the the roof rail in between the, the yeah. trim piece? Okay. Usually like a BMW or Honda or something like that. Yeah. And this was real light. It just ha only had a few things, but the price of what it cost to replace it, I was able to make money off of it. Okay. And uh, Mike, you're cutting out, aren't you, buddy? Taking off? I get a roll, guys. Okay. So, we'll tell everybody, everybody bye. Happy. Bye -bye. Thanks for hanging out for a few seconds. Yay! We got some Mike Toledo time. I told you, I'm a busy dude in Escondido, man. I'm telling you. Right. Escondido, man. <laughs> All right, famous. brother. I'll let you guys right. later. See ya. All right. All right. Don't do what Mike does twice. All right, guys. So going back to that. So you're, you're talking about your moldings there. What's 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 uh So yeah, I, I didn't even realize that that could be a moneymaker. And it was because of the internet that I learned that one, it could be done mm -hmm. to you can make money off of it. And three, you absolutely should be making money off of it. Right. You know, and that's the thing that what people don't realize, like sometimes a molding, I mean, look, it's only 60 bucks or something like that. Right. But it gets you out of replacing them. And then here's what happens when you get a hail car, you totally forget to order the moldings. You know what I mean? We get busy in the middle of a hailstorm. Next thing you know, we got two days away from delivery. We're looking at a car over there and we're like, Oh crap. I didn't order any of the moldings yeah. for this car. And sometimes just that situation alone helps you out. The other thing is if you get like a Cadillac, um, one of them little CRV or CRX, you know, whatever that little mini SUV Cadillac thing is. Yeah, CRV. Oh, is it, Cadillac. Uh, or... Yeah, CRX or something like that. I, I don't know yeah. what it is. Whatever, yeah, that little mid-sized SUV they have. Right, well, I'm yeah, here yeah. to tell you them upper moldings and the lower moldings, they're pop riveted in there. I mean, yep. and not to mention you got to take the door off, then you got to take a piece of glass out of it. Um, sure. just to access the pop rivets, then you got to pop rivet the damn things back in. I mean, and, and then you look at the insurance paperwork and what they give you 0. 0.7, <laughs> like, yeah. yeah, I think I can find a lot better things to do with 0. 0.7 hours of my time and getting right. 38 bucks. So there's times like when, when fixing the moldings, like saves you in that situation. Another yeah. time is rear quarter glass. I mean, because them things are as expensive as crap. And um, I've talked to the insurance adjusters, and they've gave me fair quotes to to glue pool and fix to repair rare, rare quarter glass. That's I a mean, good point, John. I mean, I think I've pay, been paid up to like five or 600 bucks to get in yep. there and fix one and completely blend it out. And that's another thing guys got to remember about these chrome moldings. I don't know if Daniel noticed this, but if you use a soft tip or a cherry tip or a really blunted out, like soft plastic tip, 
you can blend moldings. When you yep. hit around them, it like you can shove the metal in really easy, but you got to be so careful, and you got to be like a like really baby taps to get that stuff moving. Yeah, yeah, good to it's, know. It's soft aluminum. It's not annealed. It's not heat treated. It, it's very soft. Right. Yeah, it, it, this is going to sound really weird, but what I'd like to do when I do get moldings like that, I like to take homework home with me. You know, I'll be sitting there on the couch with the wifey watching Game of Thrones or something, and I'll sit there and just pick at it and pick out the dents with a little hand tool while I'm sitting there watching TV. Does that sound crazy? Yeah. Is that how devoted I am that I take my work home with me? That sounds pretty damn devoted more than... It like I have no life? <laughs> yeah. My wife would be like, what do you got? <laughs> I'm just happy that you're watching Game of Thrones. Yeah. yeah well, oh, you know, the, the new boobies. Game of Thrones is coming out. It is. So, I well, can't wait. It is. But yeah, when the boobies come on, the moldings go down. Oh man, Good. especially that blonde headed chick, them boobies. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Woo! Drag, <laughs> what is the dragon queen? queen? Oh man. Yeah. Well, we do have a couple ladies listening to our show, so maybe we oh, should. Oh, they are to... cool. <laughs> Crystal, she knows what's up. She's cool with it. Does she have boobies? I didn't notice. She's <laughs> I, a married woman. I am not going to answer that question. She, that she is might not like the boobies. even right. Uh, <laughs> no, she is a married right, woman. We're going off the rails. Off the rails. Yeah, yep. Off the rails. You guys just found Daniel's pervert. Really did. Reel it in. <laughs> Reel it in, John. <laughs> Reel it back in. So, all right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So going back so, going back to some hail damage repair, I want to hear you guys, you know, moldings and all that stuff. You guys got any more to hit on that? Or you, you, I just want to talk a little bit about our, some little, maybe some little secrets and stuff that we do on hail cars. Well, well one, of the, one of the tools that I'm excited about, because I, I just did a hail estimate and I'm expecting the car to come in, but uh, Jeremy Langton um, just came out at Dent Technologies coming out with a new monkey bar. And I watched the video and it's a carbon fiber, but it starts off small and then it expands. And then it has two ways to hook it. It has hooks, but yeah. then it has like kind of like a kind of like a claw kind of thing that you can hook on the outside of a, a rail. And if you're doing any kind of SUV, you got to have a monkey bar. Am I right, John? Well, unless you're old school like me, then yes, you're right. <laughs> well, I, I do things. A I monkey still... bar makes you more efficient and well, makes you more versatile. You can you can adjust from one rail to the next. Well, you guys want to know what I use? Do bunch of, what do you do? I, I take Tell a me. chain. Like basically, I have a, a piece of chain cut. So I went down to the hardware store, cut it, and I c- hooked two pieces together with one of them reverse thread nuts in the middle. And it's an old school way. It's what we used to do back in the day. I still use it. It works fine. I, 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 I'm right there with you. I guys. take a couple S hooks and hook that chain in, and then you use the reverse tightening nut. I mean, literally, it's a ten dollar system, and you got a chain that you can just roll your tool back and forth. Now, I don't use a carbon fiber rod. So I don't know if that chain would be destructive on carbon fiber. That I don't know. Mm, yeah. But yeah, I think it would. Yeah, but for what my current setup, um, it's good. And if I do go to carbon fiber, I might go with that Jeremy Langton's or I might go with Zimmerman's because Zimmerman's got some really good uh, yeah, products he's got good stuff too, for yeah. in there as well. But I definitely one of the things that's on my radar more than anything is that Todd Zimmerman's uh, carbon fiber rod that he came out with. I mean, they're they're just it's got to be good if that many people are saying that many good things yeah. about it. Carbon Tech, excellent product. So I haven't done the video yet because I I tried to do it and it just where where I was trying to demo it it just didn't look very good so I didn't post it, but I took. Jeremy sent me a new carbon fiber rod, and then I had the exact same length and a red, ready or a regular metal type of rod, and I stuck it under my stairs, and then I was like doing a plank, doing a push up, right, yeah. to see the flex. Carbon fiber doesn't flex, man. It's strong as hell, and that metal thing was just flexing like heck. Well, now there's different. There, just like titanium, there's different grades of of carbon fiber. So mm-hmm. you know there are rods out there that do flex, and I'm not I'm not going to name yeah. names because I don't know them. I got an uh, old I, old one that is made out of aluminum. It flexes really bad. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Now one of the one of the tricks I've always done with hail cars and. John, you're old school too, so you probably do this too. But I have a snap on owl, owl, a u, what, a w l e l, a w l, 
Owl. A W L. Owl. Owl. And you know, it's a pick. We can tell who didn't win the spelling bee contest, but that, that definitely. <laughs> I'm right with you. Just, I'm just that's a dent guy. Chicago coming. I'm out. just a poor old yeah. dent guy, man. <laughs> right, that's 12 years of Catholic education right there. Uh, so, what I do, and it's the it's the small handle, right? It, it fits in the palm of your hand. Yeah. I have that shaved down, and and what I did was I marked it on the awl. And I shaved it down so there's when I hold it in my hand, there's just a little bit coming off off, off the top, you know, kind of like I'm holding a pencil with mm-hmm. all the, the base of it in my hand. I still to this day fix open access, hail dents or dents on hoods or roofs with with my hand. I'd rather put my knee up. I'll put my foot on the bumper yeah. or on, on the grill. And I'll I'll use my knee as leverage, and I'll hand pick it up. I have yeah. full control of that, hundred percent. See, I, I do now, that. Many, a, I do that with a, the pink whale tail, Dentcraft whale tail. Oh right, yeah. yeah. And you know, whatever tool is is comfortable in your hands that you know, like it's an extension of your hand. Like I do it with my finger. tactical hammer. Yeah, and then I put it. I've used it with the tactical. Yeah. You know, honestly, but, I brought out the tactical to, to 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 encourage people to do that. But I rare, I still go back to my. I'll be honest, I, I do just go back to my Dentcraft whale tail when it comes to pushing up like that. Yeah. Now the other tool that has kind of replaced that, to be honest with you, is the ultra the the hand pistol with the adjustable screw on tip. Well, God, I, I wouldn't know what one of them are like because somebody stole them from me. Yes, we uh, someone did. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it might have been Daniel and Vince that stole me and Mike's. Uh, yes, and we stole school. them from you. And Daniel did. Get over and it. Then, and Steve <laughs> is it. probably angry that I've never talked about it. He's probably like, okay, just get over. Steve that, is probably man. like that asshole. I gave him a tool and he never I talked about it. it. And you guys just <laughs> stole it from me. And he doesn't know because he doesn't listen I'm to our radio send it show. Back to you. I'm sending it back to you. Yeah. so I don't hear, hear from you anymore. <laughs> well, here, here's the the tool number. It's one four zero one S T. Yeah, it's a three point five hail pistol with adjustable screw on tip, and like you can change that. that tip out if you don't like the tip it comes with. It's a uh, it's interchangeable. And that but was that, made by Eric, um, who, the guy they invented that. Eric, um, Eric, I can't remember his last name. Okay. He's actually up here in my area. He's up in Vallejo area. Oh well, mm. you know what? The, the The good thing about that tool, opposed to using an using an awl, is that you use it as a leverage, so you're saving your wrists. Because I I know after doing hail cars by hand, just yeah. using a, a hand tool, your your wrists and your forearms they they do pay a price later on that day when you wake up the next day and you're in clench fists because you've been pushing really hard with your hands. Yeah, so that's not a good sign. You know, something I've been doing a lot with hail cars lately because we've had little hail storms around here. I have been getting so good with the soft tip tool because it really intrigued me. I used to only use sharp tip tools like the uh, Mark Zirkus tools. And I still use that for my large dents and some really, really small ones. But for the medium sized dents, I kind of, I heard Tony Frazier, who's one of the better hail techs out there, talk who? about Tony Frazier. You guys know who's who that? he is. <laughs> well, he was talking about, uh, you know, he's he's known as one of the better hail techs out there. Better, you know, de- definitely a great hail tech. I heard, heard nothing but good things about his skill set there. And um, he uses mainly soft tips. So it got me thinking. I'm like, man, you know, I just want to see how he's doing it. So I started experimenting with it. And the key to soft tip to actually pushing dents really, really quickly is making sure you nail that thing absolutely perfect, dead center. And, I mean, you push it. You can't close it on the side. You can't mound it up. But there's a way that when you get used to it with soft tips and you're working on hail dents, that you can push them things flush and just keep on rolling. And it takes a little bit of practice, a little bit of time to develop. But I found that in conjunction with a Zirkus rod has been kind of my two best friends just based on the type of dent. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah, nice. Eric Patton. Eric Patton is the guy that come does that ultra tool. Oh, Eric Patton it, huh? Yeah. He put Eric a pat he put a patent he put a patent on it. Patton. Oh, that's what Eric you're saying? Patton. So he's the one who's got the patent, Eric? Eric Patton. <laughs> yeah. Eric Patton. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to Eric. He's a totally cool dude. Well, oh. we could probably do a whole episode on hail tricks and tips. Uh, and we probably will do a whole episode. Can, can We're I, running wait, out wait, of wait, time, wait, wait, wait. We, are we just can't do time. it all. Well, let, let, me, let, me, let me give one more thing, a little hail trick, okay, here. 
what what I want you guys to think about here is when you position your lights when you're working on a hail damage roof, position them towards a V and make sure that whenever you move your head, the light will flow through the panel at different directions, including coming straight at you and from side to side based on your head movement. So while you're fixing your dents on your roofs, you can cross check. When you go to your side panels, I want you to think about breaking down both lights and having them set up on the front of the car and the back of the car so you can quickly cross check without completely repositioning and moving your light to the other side. You know what I mean? So having two lights floating on the side panels helps out a ton when you got to jump in and not only cross checking but hitting the dents on the front of the door towards the rear of the door, you know, the front of the rail, the rear of the rail and doing it that way. And another thing that I want to encourage you guys to do is that if you're glue pulling a rail, work a 2 foot section at a time, pull them all into high spots, work on tapping it all out and then go through it and cross check. Or go through it one more time and fix the little pits. Don't get stuck on this thing where you're doing one little dent at a time. Uh, not, real, real quick, another thing. Don't get stuck when you're doing hail damage repair thinking you have to fix every dent flawless. Know in your mind that you're going to be moving around that hood. Know in your mind you're going to be moving around on the deck lid. And know that you can hit that dent from other angles. So when the dent starts looking like, oh, wow, it's looking pretty good, but I can tell something's just a little bit wrong, know that that's a red flag that you're going to have to cross-check it. And just understand that you're going to be at the other side of that panel eventually, and you can hit it from there. So... That, that way you're just yeah. not moving all around. You know, stay in one area and go to the next area. And then at the end, I, if you have to, scan the whole panel. Find little flickers and stuff like that and just fix them right at the end. But keep I moving. I think that's important, too, is, especially, John, when you're getting into the bigger damage with the, you know, the really stretched, big dents. Yeah. Because if you fix it flawlessly and then move on to the one next to it, you might have taken metal from the one that right. you're about to work on from, from the previous one. And so, I, that's what I like to do. I like to work the whole area when I'm working mm -hmm. on big, nasty stretch ones. Little ones, doesn't matter. But when you're working the big stuff, work the whole area, not just one dent at a time. And it's just important thing is, is just to keep moving. You know what I mean? Just don't get stuck. Don't get isolated. If something if something bogs you down, if you've got a big dent that's starting to bother you and bog you down, go on to something else. Come back to it. Heck, do what I do. Put a little wet sand on it and just leave it. Don't buff it out. Just leave it under the wet sand thing and then make that your last dent. It's going to be easier to fix that thing when you're finishing the damn car rather than fix it when you still got 100 dents ahead of you. You hope. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you'll find a way. If you're like me, you'll find a way. Well, I think that brings a conclusion to this uh, episode. And we should move on to quick tips. Tech tips. Yes. Stop okay. sucking eggs. Time for PDR tech tips. Boing. Well, we're getting we better. Done that in a long time. <laughs> we're huh? getting know. better. <laughs> what do you got, Vince? You got some tech tips for us? Uh, not today. Oh man, oh, this I gave is one last. Embarrassing. Week. I'm trying to figure. Oh, uh, I got one. I'm only allowed one a month. Okay, John, you go. Okay, so here's the tech tip, and really this is more of like a bulletin of warning, because if this happens to you, you're going to want to blow your head off, just like I did, <laughs> or I wanted to. And literally the other day I had a uh, damn uh, brand new Mercedes Benz in. Uh, it was like one of them AMGs, I don't know, the little sleek ones that look like, I can't remember what model it is. I don't even care what model it is. You know me, I like my American cars, but... All right. America. I guess right, son. I like my American cars. You can take them Mercedes Benz and shove them clean up your ass. But <laughs> so uh, so the wiring harnesses on them things, okay, are freaking like clipped in there. They look like um like two clips that meet together, like two pieces of plastic. Like one of them's rubber one on the outside, the other one is clipped into the actual door jam. Yeah. So me yeah. being a total I was being a total dipshit. I unclipped this one. And the door had been painted before. I mean, this is almost a brand new car, and somebody had hacked the shit out of this door and painted. And evidently, they removed that when they painted it, take off the door handle or whatever. And the damn thing fell down into the door. And I'm here to tell you that that Mercedes Benz, it, it's ridiculous trying to get it out. I mean, I think even if you take the pan off, it's got one of them things that got like the the wire rope thing that connects all the windows. And when you pull it off, the whole window motor comes out. And then you oh, probably sure. you, you got the little, you know, the wire. I mean, just the one thing you do not want to get into, right? It's got it all over that freaking door. And so I literally had to take a, a tool and go down there and fish this sucker out. And I mean, it took me an hour and a half to to... It was it was about an hour and a half. It took me literally on a ten minute job. It took me an hour and a half. Why a customer was waiting in my lobby, 
and I'm fishing this out, and my son, and he's holding a flashlight for me, and here I am like, you're moving the light! You're moving the light! <laughs> you know? And he, he, I felt so bad for him. He had to see me basically, don't move the light! He had to stand there like a statue holding this light, you know? <laughs> and uh, But hey, he, he learned how to work with the boss, right? So, But I eventually fish this thing out, and the damn thing's upside down. And I'm like, my God. So you, I had to flip this thing around and bring it in like perfectly into this hole. And then when I got it there, it's like you couldn't grab it. So I had to take these little, you know, them little hooks, the sharp points and all that stuff. I had to get in there and hook them and like yank that thing. And I'm not shitting you. I'm about got this thing about halfway in. Right when I get it halfway in, a guy, a customer comes walking. He goes, hello, sir. I would like an estimate. And I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> one of Vince's, uh, you know, you, you know, it's about to be one of them low ball estimates, you know, just based on the accent sure. there. And uh, I literally looked at him in the face. And I said, sir, we're closed. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, he looks at me and goes, oh, please give me an estimate. And I'm like, damn it. So I grabbed it and like finally got it wiggled in place, you know, made him stand there for five minutes watching me. I walk out to go give him an estimate. And he, we look at his bumper. He goes, how much for the bumper? I'm like, your paint's cracked. How much just for dent? And I say, 275. He goes, is that to paint it? And I said, no, that's for the dent. He goes, oh. Gives me this weird smile like I'm overcharging him. Jumps in his car and leaves. I wanted to like snag him up and choke him in front of my shop. But I didn't. So I let the nice Indian man leave. And... <laughs> <laughs> and uh but that is <laughs> that is a public service announcement there do not unclip them wiring harnesses if, if it's a solid piece of plastic in that mercedes benz door that thing yeah. falls in there you are in for a hell of a ride and i feel like i almost fixed an rubik's cube or like like yeah. like just to get that thing out of there it, i felt like it was almost impossible i was getting ready to send it to the dealer yeah 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 it's oh and then the, when i finally fixed it the airbag light came on vince Oh, did it really? Absolutely. <laughs> nice. So I got to tell the customer she had to go and get the uh, fix the airbag. So, wow, wow. So, hey, Daniel, <laughs> Daniel, Daniel. I think it's time for your quick tip, buddy. Oh, I think Daniel stroked. <laughs> I out. think this is the first time Daniel's fell asleep on the show. Is so that just? <laughs> I, I, I have something to explain to you. <laughs> <laughs> so, I got I got a call I got a call at three did, o'clock in the morning. Did you record that? No, I didn't recorded. get the video oh, that of that. Awesome Damn, I didn't know. I got a call at three o'clock in the morning, waking me up, and I couldn't go to sleep after that. All due to John Hiley. That's because Daniel does not have, know how to take off his boxer. No. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's because I have a I have a ring uh, camera on the front of my shop, and sometimes it lets me know if there's somebody in front of my shop in the middle of the night. Yeah, and yeah so yeah. that's why I keep it on. Then John, you know, he's East Coast time, we're West Coast time, and he gets on. We have a little thing, Boxer, and he gets on there and he starts uh, just giving us his advice at three o'clock in the morning. And California my wife time, is yeah. like, "Shut that stuff off!" And you can't shut it off. It's it's harder than heck to shut off. <laughs> yeah, once like, he's going. Wow. I know. I started yipping and yelling after that, and I was like, "Played by Daniel Grom in California yeah. at three a.m." <laughs> <laughs> yeah so daniel do you have a tech tip or uh, let's wrap it up here no i don't have one wow that's a first, first it is a first I'll, I'll, so. no i'm gonna give one i'm gonna give one oh, okay boy. say uh what's that 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 really uh that mercedes tape put that Tessa on tape Tessa. Tessa tape thank you the Tessa tape so i've got the rubber the red rubber tips from dentcraft and I put those over those rubber tips to kind of make them last a little longer and not to mark up the, the car. You don't have to clean them or anything. You can just peel it off, put a new one on. So there's my tech tip. Done. Nice. Awesome. Nice. Awesome. Well, listen, everyone, all our listeners out there, we want to thank you for tuning in to episode 78. And make sure you go online and check out our other episodes that are just as awesome as this one was. And anyone else have some burning desires? You know what, guys? Level up your tools. Buy some new stuff. You know, get on the game. Hey, and join the revolution. Boom. We're out of here. Thanks for listening. <laughs>